charismatic. She's kind of an Italian fireball. Outgoing, energetic, fun. Funny. She's intense. Enthusiastic. <laughs> Sometimes a little alarming uh, in her passion and exuberance. <laughs> She's crazy, I think. She is crazy. She's crazy. She is Camp Hill Field Hockey. Equal parts coach, critic, cheerleader, friend. How can one person be all of those? Well, it's apparently a walk in the park if you're Anna Baldini. Anna is a special person. She has a way of, of bringing people together. She has a way of making us all excited about life and about doing things together and about being together. And this is nothing new. It's just Anna. Always has been. She didn't really get into playing Barbies and everything. Anna was more the one going outside and helping us organize softball in the backyard or, or just playing games with all of us. She had that, that ability for when she was younger. She could see that's the direction she was going. You know, there's a 10-year difference in age, so you know, she's in college and I'm still a young, you know, young kid tagging along with her. She would take me here, take me there. We had a lot of fun together. And if you ask around, Anna Baldini loves to have fun. But before there's a good time to be had, you'd better get your work done. And she's done that from the time she took the goalie's job at Mechanicsburg High School from her best friend to 299 career victories as a head coach. Anna didn't get there by accident. When she played hockey in high school and college through her teaching career and as a coach, she was able to unlock the secrets of life, teaching, coaching. She knew how to win and she knew how to lose. Those aren't easy things to grasp, especially for kids, but lucky for the hundreds of girls who crossed her path, they had a great teacher. At the end of the day, it wasn't about winning. You could win a game but play really poorly and she'd let you know that although you won, you know, it wasn't your best showing. Or you could lose a game and have played your heart out and she would let you know that you put everything you had into that game and she was gosh darn proud of you. And in all the practices and games, even if they were hard or we were tired or exhausted, um, she would always have some funny line to bring us back and, and remember that we're there to have fun. Winning and losing doesn't matter as long as we put our hearts into the game itself. And it's not always about the outcome, it's always been about the process. And there's never been any dispute. The author of that process was Anna Baldini. She is the boss. Well, first of all, she'd tell us that. It was her team, and you are going to play by the rules, or you weren't going to play. And some girls who, I guess, weren't really committed to what that meant did walk away, but the girls who stayed got an amazing experience. The practices weren't always the easiest. You lollygag, you run. Keep it up, get ready for an earful, and you will take it and like it. Standing up to Anna is not something that I would recommend being yelled at and you just feel like lower than pond scum and you see like even the tennis team like oh they're scared the football team's scared it's like okay when the football team's scared it's bad so yeah I think even the football team was glad that Anna wasn't coaching for them. <laughs> you never wanted to be yelled at by Ms. Baldini it was always a bad day when you got yelled at by Ms. Baldini. I've gotten yelled at probably multiple times every game of my career but I think it's only made me stronger as a player and a person. And the rule that this is Miss B's team didn't just apply to the people on the field. Parents liked it, didn't like it, too bad. This was her, uh, her way, her style. And uh, it kind of worked over 25 years. She coached softball, basketball before hockey. And that her outfield kept moving. And she's standing on the baseline and they're moving. And she's not telling them to move. And she finally looked out and yelled at the fathers and said, if you want to come wear these pants and coach this team, you can come right here and do that. But in the meantime, just leave the girls alone and you people need to look at me. 
and all the dads put their head down, and enough said. But there's still so much more to say about Miss B. Lots more words to be spoken. And you know what they say about words. They don't speak nearly as loud as actions. And if Anna Baldini is anything, she's a woman of action. The greatest thing she accomplished as a coach was uh, to be able to bring those kids together as a family. And perhaps there's nothing greater to her than family. She's had a lot of defining moments in her lifetime, like when she gave her mom uh, a kidney. When Anna's mom was diagnosed with end-stage renal disease, uh, we had to decide what we were going to do. She had to go on dialysis, and then the next step for her to survive would have been a transplant. All my kids were tested, and Anna and my son Nick uh, had the best match for her. Going through both being matched for my mother for a kidney and all, you know, knowing that it, there was never a second thought between either one of us wanting to do it. Uh, ultimately, though, she wanted, you know, she just said that this is what she wanted. We're sitting in a pre-op room before they're wheeled into surgery. Uh, it was incredible to watch her and her mom and, and what took place, how they bonded. I donated a kidney to her in 1996, and unfortunately, we were very unprepared for the failure of that transplant. She embodied the definition of strength. She, she had this uncanny ability to make people feel good even when we know she was feeling so bad. The most wonderful thing about it for my mom was that she loved her family so much. Nora has been with us in many, many of the successes and any disappointments. Nora's spirit is, is definitely with that family and their growth and their health. And Anna spearheads that. Anna's got a really beautiful mix of both her parents and her. To learn from her about resiliency and strength, that power resides in me. And in some small form, I do believe that I have this ability to touch the lives of the students that I teach and the girls that I coach.